Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question from Stephen Hopley. Um, he has been having trouble uh, with his uh, receiving. He's in uh, the UK, Gulf 4, Yankee Tango, uh, Kilo, and... Uh, He's having trouble where he used to have fairly low noise and now his noise floor is creeping up. Unfortunately, that is a common thing about that. So what I thought we would do today is just a general coverage of the aids that you have on a standard receiver in your transceiver that you can use to help improve your reception of a signal that you want. There's actually quite a few. Some that I listed here are preamps or the attenuator, uh, various filters, uh, modes that you can use, RF gain and, and squelch. Okay, so uh, there are a number of things that we can look at on a uh, receiver that can help us pick out a signal through the noise or interference. There's preamps and um, attenuators, filters, different modes you can use, RF gain and a squelch, uh, notch, noise blanker, noise reduction, receiver incremental tuning, split, audio frequency gain, the recorder, memories, um, a band scope, and the audio band scope, and an S meter. At all kinds of things. I thought what we'd do is look at some of these and talk about what they do. I mean, they're listed in your radio's manual, but under what conditions would you use them? We're going to take a look here at the, before we jump in and take a look at the ICOM 7300 and some of its interference fighting capabilities, which are legion, um, I want to pay a special thank you to Tracy Lambeth. She is a new patron. Uh, on patreon.com slash ke0og and you can go there and become a patron too. This receiver that we have in front of us is the reference receiver from the reference station. It's the ICOM 7300 uh, and it's a very nice little radio. Had it for a few years. Uh, it's getting to the point where we need to decide whether we want to keep this as the reference radio or move to something a little newer. Um, and I appreciate your feedback on that. Anyway, what we're going to talk about here is some of the different things that can help you receive better and so on. Now, all of these things down here have to do with um, mostly transmitting. Um, however, there is a tuner here. If you turn on the tuner and you push it down, it will cause it to tune and that may give you a slightly louder signal if the antenna is just really tuned right up to one to one. Okay, now we've got some of our filters in here. Now all of these filters here and um, all these filters here we can get at, oh, I turned the preamp on didn't I? Okay, by going to the functions menu the preamp right here we have a choice of preamp one preamp two preamp off and if we hold it we get the attenuator now let me show you what that does um, on here if I turn the preamp on suddenly everything becomes much stronger the problem is that you are making the noise stronger too. So that's not a good thing to do. So now if you use the attenuator, you can see that it really gets uh, much darker. Now I want to tell you something about this attenuator. The attenuator is the same as turning down the RF gain control. Okay. Now why would you turn down the RF gain control? You would do that because um, you might find that you're talking to a strong signal, but there's a weak signal in the background. 
So what you can do is turn down the RF gain control. So you're cutting everybody back, and then the loud one is the one that you hear. It's very handy, especially on CW, to do that. Okay, now the notch filter, if we, we'll just do it from over here, notch, and we push this, and let's see, notch. Turn the notch on. There's, and we can, you know, there is a way to move that around. Okay. Anyway, let's try that notch over again. That notch is on. Okay, the notch, you can change the position of the notch. Okay, if now what is this for? This is for if there's somebody tuning up right on you and you have a steady tone. You can make this notch really narrow, um, width, wide, mid, narrow, okay, and then move it where it needs to be so that it'll take that one signal out of there that you don't want. Okay, it's a very handy thing to do if you have a tuner upper on you. Now let's keep turning this till we have notch on, notch off. And it says notch off, but obviously the notch is not off. Let's see what we've got over here. Notch off. Okay, and we go back over here and we see that the notch is off. So the notch allows you to block out a certain range of frequencies in the middle of your signal. Now, the next thing we have is the noise blanker. Now, the noise blanker, go to functions again. Go to noise blanker, okay, right here. Okay, and you've got the level, the depth, and the width. This is for impulse noise, like um, automobiles back in the 1950s that had very poor uh, spark plug uh, impulse re uh, rejection, okay, and so, that can really help uh, with that. So you can just uh, turn this on or off. And you can tell what it is by going to function. It's on. It doesn't really hurt anything. Now the next one's a biggie. It's noise reduction. It's either right over here where my left thumb is. Or you can pick it up here. And if you pick it up here, you can look at the level of noise reduction you want to put in. And if you have other noise, uncorrelated noise, like static or whatever, you can put that right in there. Okay, let's see. Now, uh, so that takes care of the ones that are over here. And I talked about how you can back off on this if there are problems. There is a squelch or two right there, but we don't use that except on FM usually. Okay. So now let's look over here. The normal multi switch is a purely transmit type stuff. Now we look up over here, receiver incremental tuning using the little multi knob here allows you to tune your receiver up and down without changing your transmitting frequency. The Delta transmit does the same thing on the transmit side. The reason that you want to do that and the RIT is going to be the one that is most helpful is uh, if the other station is starting to drift, you follow it, but you keep transmitting on the same frequency. Otherwise, uh, it will trace you down uh, the band, okay? So um, this gives you, we've got memory controls and things like that in here. So what I wanted to do was just go over some features of the radio that allow you to receive a signal better. If you're in a place where the background noise has gone up, I would suggest you run um, noise reduction most all the time. And, oops, sorry, shaky fingers. Noise reduction, turn it on, and then experiment with the level. You may just want it on a little bit you know, to kind of take the edge off the noise. Let's listen. If you put it on too much, it 
it will distort the signal that you're trying to receive. Okay. So Stephen, I hope that gives you um, a little bit of an idea of some of the things your radio can do and uh, other people who are running into interference problems and so on. Uh, it is a fact that background noise on HF is increasing and there's not much that we can uh, do about that um, except to try these various uh, interference uh, features. One other thing that I didn't mention is that you can always set up your antenna like if you've got a mag loop or something there's a null on the antenna and you can try pointing the null in such a direction as to null out the interference. That works if you have like a nearby broadcast station that is always uh, its harmonics are blasting you off the air something like that. An antenna with a null will really help with that. Now one other thing I'd like to mention before we go, I got a, a quickie here. This uh, is a, um, a message from, oh, let's see, Gary, KC9 GGV, KC9 GGV. And he pointed out to me, he gave me a URL of a uh, place in Germany that was selling what looked like a uh, Step IR Big IR clone. So I wrote to Step IR and asked them about it. And I got a reply from their president, uh, John Mertel, uh, president and CEO, WA7IR. And this is what he says. Uh, that is an antenna company in Italy that copied our design many years ago, and one of our German resellers quit being a reseller of Step IR products and bought the remains of that company from the original Italian owners in the last few years. They are now a reseller of the Ultra Beam product, but cannot sell in the U.S., where we do own numerous patents for this product. The idea of intellectual property... Uh, protection is an important one in technology and the bigger companies will patent their uh, things not just in the United States uh, but in, in Canada and Europe and try to get patents in China and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, internet, it, 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 let's see, intellectual property theft is a real issue in uh, today's business environment and we're seeing a lot of that going on. Uh, it's an intercultural thing too because uh, different cultures have different uh, thresholds for pain as far as copying someone else's work. Uh, some cultures view copying as a sincere form of flattery. They're copying you. Uh, here in the U.S. we consider it uh, intellectual property theft and in fact in the beginning of the Industrial Revolution it was the intellectual property uh, environment in Scotland that enabled uh, companies to become giants in their field like James Watt with the steam engine and so on. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there as a quickie. And if you would like to help support this channel financially, you can do so by going to dcastlercom support. And until we next meet, 73.